Hello, and welcome to the next episode in our How to Apply I for 16 video series. I'm Jessica Tare. I lead our global technical team for lease accounting under I4S. I'm joined today by Avni Mashru from our UK technical team who specializes in real estate leases. In our last episode, we discussed how to identify non-lease components in your lease arrangements. Today, we'll continue that discussion to see how you measure the lease payments. Avni, could you please explain how to allocate the payments if you have a lease component and a non-lease component? Yeah, sure. So if you're a lessee, the standard specifically says to you, you have to look at the standalone price, relative standalone price of your lease and non-lease component and then allocate that way. Interestingly, if you're lessor, the standard straight away refers you to IFRS 15, which is the revenue standard, and you look to the guidance within that to determine the, um, the split. And can you tell me a little bit more about what is a standalone selling price? What Absolutely. does that actually mean in practice? So uh, if I go back to real estate leases, um, what I'm looking at is the separate standalone price for each component. So example I can use is a lease that has a service arrangement, maintenance service arrangement within it. So what I'd be looking for is what's the standalone price of just leasing the property and what's the standalone price of just receiving the maintenance service. Now I could go to the lessor, they may have that standalone information um, readily available. Um, I could go to other service providers. So for maintenance, I could look in the market and see who I might contract with to get that service. Um, another scenario is I could estimate. So I could use the best information I have available uh, and come up with an estimate of that price. And so to use an example, mm -hmm. going back to my lease and my maintenance service, mm -hmm. say the standalone price of my lease is $90 a year. It's a cheap lease. Mm -hmm. um, and say the standalone price of the maintenance service is $10. So the overall standalone prices of my total components is $100. So when I go back to the overall payments in my arrangement, that would mean that 90% of my payments would be allocated to the lease component and 10% to the non-lease component. Mm. Sounds like a little bit of a complexity that they've written into the standard, but <laughs> helpfully they've given lessees the option not to have to separate, and they can do that um, for each class of asset, mm -hmm. right? So they don't have to separate uh, non-lease components if they don't want to. Mm -hmm. um, but I think actually in practice, you know, when we're talking to clients, especially in the real estate, I think because they're big ticket items, most people are looking to separate them. But, but maybe for sort of smaller equipment and maybe auto loans and stuff like that, they're potentially not mm -hmm. um, thinking and kind of combining it. Because of course the consequence is you have a bigger liability on your balance sheet and Absolutely. what does that do to ratios and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Now I know in our last video we talked about um, sort of insurance and property taxes where it wasn't necessarily uh, a non-lease component. How would a lessee deal with those in, in their allocation? Yeah, absolutely. So property tax and insurance link to the lease component, so mm -hmm. it's not a separate non-lease component. And then you've got to think about because they link to the lease component, they're included in the liability. So the next question is, how do you do that? Now, if your property taxes and insurance are fixed, that's very easy, it's mm -hmm. a fixed number that you put into your liability, very likely they will not be fixed fixed mm -hmm. and they will be variable in some way. And then you have to decide what kind of variability they have. So if property taxes and insurance are deemed to vary with a rate or an index, IFRS 16 very clearly tells you to include them in the lease liability to the extent cash flows have changed, but you'd mm -hmm. certainly include them. If they're deemed not to vary with a rate or index, they're excluded. Uh, and obviously you then deal with the payments as and when they arise and they go to your profit or loss. The only exception is if you deem them to be in substance fixed, but aside from that, they would be excluded. Now, figuring out whether the, the rate, um, the property taxes or insurance do relate to a rate or index or don't is clearly a judgment area. Uh, and as mom might expect, does vary by jurisdiction. So you have to really think carefully in your jurisdiction as to how those property taxes are calculated uh, and also how that insurance is calculated. Mm. So just to summarize, firstly, we talked about allocating payments to different components based on standalone selling prices. And unless you're taking the option to account for them together. Secondly, payments that can't be accounted for as a separate component, like property taxes and insurance, have to be included as part of the overall payments. And finally, when the payments are variable, judgment will be required. Thank you for listening. I hope you'll join us for the next video. And for more information, please visit pwc.com slash IFRS 16. Thank you.